because pretty much every single video this guy puts out is full of misinformation and really does nothing except mislead people and promote garbage products in the process. What's up guys, Sean Nalawani, realscienceathletics.com. And yes, the man himself, our favorite elite level, world-class fitness expert V-Shred has finally made his long-awaited return to YouTube. What's going on, guys? Not that he ever really left. He basically just spent the past year or so away from regular videos and running his insanely annoying paid ads, promoting bullshit concepts like somatotypes. How come it feels like some people can eat anything they want and still look great while you gain a pound from just looking at a restaurant menu? I'll tell you why. It's called somatypes. 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 And I didn't just make that word up. <laughs> uh, top secret diet hacks based around the thermic effect of food. The nuclear bomb for weight loss is adding certain foods that have an insanely high thermic effect. God. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. And my all-time favorite, which is the hidden biological fat-burning loophole discovered by Harvard scientists, which drains fat cells, puts metabolism on overdrive, and burns pounds of fat 24-7, which then just turns out to be a sales pitch for a worthless $40 bottle of fat loss pills. Harvard researchers have found what they're calling a biological loophole that takes just 30 seconds first thing in the morning that can help crank up even the slowest of metabolisms and help promote calorie burning all day long. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. This biological loophole they discovered is something that forces your body to start burning up all your stored fat at once. In fact, this new discovery even targets your body's deepest fat stores. The lie detector test determined that was a lie. Well, the truth comes down to one word, metabolism. A slow metabolism will drag fat burning to a screeching halt, even if you do plenty of cardio and count every calorie and sleep eight hours a night. And that's a very common and very crappy position to be in. Each time a snake whips out its tongue, it captures chemicals from the air or water and carries them back in. Look, V-Shred doesn't know what he's talking about, but he's pretty good at reading a prompter. He doesn't research this. He doesn't know any of it. He just is an actor. The lie detector <laughs> test determined that you are telling the truth. <laughs> Now, on the one hand, I was glad to see that he hadn't made any regular YouTube videos in almost a year uh, because pretty much every single video this guy puts out is full of misinformation and really does nothing except mislead people and promote garbage products in the process. You know, maybe that sounds a bit harsh, but it's really just the honest truth whether people like hearing it or not. Uh, but on the other hand, I was also kind of disappointed since his videos do provide so many great content creating opportunities because they can be used as an example of what not to do and to help educate viewers in the process to make sure they're getting the right information to reach their goals, which is ultimately what this is all about, okay? It's about helping you achieve your health and fitness goals in the most effective and sustainable way possible. That's why I create these videos to point people in the right direction and to ensure that they aren't wasting their time and effort and money on things that don't work. And breaking down misinformation like this is one way of doing that. What's going on guys? And I thought maybe with um, his full year away from creating content that there was a tiny chance that he was using that time to uh, brush up on his knowledge after all the heat that he took last year after essentially being exposed by the rest of the YouTube fitness community for really not having a clue what he's talking about. Uh, but that was probably just wishful thinking on my part. And today I wanna do a quick review of his newest video, 10 minute at home full body workout, minimal equipment. So today, we're going to do a follow along workout that will blast calories, help sculpt lean muscle, and it only takes 10 minutes of your day. The truth is you can actually get a great workout in a short amount of time, but it has to be done correctly. Now that's very true, it has to be done correctly. Uh, Vince does make a great point there, but unfortunately he doesn't actually follow up on it. Uh, the big problem with so many of these at home uh, circuit style workouts is that a lot of fitness trainers out there think that they can just take some random collection of fancy exercises and mash them all together in whatever order, and that as long as you're sweating and your heart rate is elevated, then that's good enough. And if the person demonstrating that workout is in good shape and the, uh, the video is done with high quality production value and some motivating music in the background, then the audience will tend to just go along with it and assume that it must be an effective workout that they're gonna get great results from. And if you think V-Shred having a lot of subscribers means that you should follow his workouts, then keep in mind that even this guy had a large following once too. Hi, I thought today we work on a couple of things, okay? So we go one, two, that's it. 
That's it. That's it. That's it. And yeah, any form of exercise is obviously better than none. And if someone watches one of V Shred's workouts and it motivates them to get up off the couch and do something, then that's obviously good. Um, and if you don't take fitness that seriously and you just want something to get you moving and sweating a bit, then fine. Uh, or if you are Grandma Josephine and you're just a complete beginner who just wants to be more active in general, again, that's fine. However, if your goal is to get in a truly effective workout and burn some calories while creating a good muscle building stimulus, uh, that will actually have some real hypertrophy benefits, then the workout has to be properly structured and it has to have some actual thought put into it. You can't just throw uh, a bunch of shit at the wall and hope that it sticks. Oh my God. He shit everywhere. He shit! Now the main issue with this particular V-Shred home workout is the use of combination exercises. And I see these being shown all over YouTube and all over Instagram. And so I actually wanted to use this video uh, to demonstrate a larger point. Okay, this isn't just about V-Shred, it's about helping you understand how to structure a proper workout and why a lot of these combo exercises should ultimately be avoided in favor of something more basic. Um, a combo exercise is basically where you're lifting a given weight, but you're performing two or more different movement patterns in an alternating fashion fashion with that same weight. Now, assuming your goal is to actually maximize muscle stimulation, um, or at least provide a decent stimulus to your muscles, uh, to all of the muscles that are involved in that particular exercise, that's actually going to have some real uh, strength and hypertrophy effect, then it doesn't make sense to randomly combine different exercises into one, since a lot of the time, the amount of weight that you can handle uh, on one exercise will differ quite a bit from what you can handle on a different exercise because of the muscles that are involved in the specific movement pattern that you're doing. And V-Shred, of course, manages to include some of the worst possible exercise combinations by merging bigger compound movements with smaller isolation exercises. For example, lateral squats with a tricep kickback in between, 10 reps each side with a tricep kickback in between sides. So he has you doing a squatting exercise that involves some of the biggest and strongest muscle groups on your body, okay, your quads and your glutes, and for some reason he combines that with a triceps kickback, which is a very small isolation exercise uh, with a terrible resistance curve where the amount of relative weight that you can handle is extremely small. Uh, in other words, if you're using an amount of weight that allows you to perform triceps kickbacks in the first place, there's no reason at all why you'd want to be using that same weight for a squatting exercise. It just means that by default, the weight would be way too light to do squats with. I mean, it just doesn't make sense. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. And by the way, if there's any other uh, fitness experts or specific pieces of content that you want to see me critique in a future video, then feel free to comment below and let me know because I do read all the comments and I do take your suggestions into consideration. Um, and if you do enjoy these types of videos, then make sure to hit that like button and let me know and I will keep on creating them. Uh, but anyway, after that, he's got lunges combined with biceps curls. What the fuck are you doing? So same concept here, okay, there's just no reason to ever combine these two exercises into one since they are completely different movements that train completely different muscles uh, that are capable of handling very different weights. And the issue is that because these combo exercises seem innovative and unique, a lot of beginners will just assume that it's an effective exercise and not realize how silly it is to actually go ahead and do something like this. Goblet squat with a shoulder press. You're gonna do this for 10 reps. Now this one isn't that bad because he's at least combining uh, two different compound exercises together. So a dumbbell front squat with an overhead press. And if the goal of this workout is more just for um, general calorie burning rather than trying to actually build muscle, then I wouldn't say that this is a terrible combination. Okay, even a broken clock is still right twice a day after all. Um, and then after that, he throws in a three-way shoulder exercise. Two-way raise, lateral to front upright 10 total reps and one rep is all three so first off um, when you're performing upright rows you shouldn't be raising your elbows up so high like that um, that's going to put your shoulders into an awkward internally rotated position that can really stress your rotator cuffs over time uh, instead if you are going to do upright rows you should only bring your elbows up to shoulder height but no higher than that 
Uh, secondly, front raises are pretty much just an unnecessary exercise for the most part. Uh, your front delts already get hit very hard during all of your pressing exercises for your chest and your shoulders. And unless there's somehow an obvious lagging muscle group, um, which would be very rare, then they don't usually require any extra isolation work. And then thirdly, again, there's just no real reason to combine all of these exercises into one uh, because upright rows are a compound lift that allow you to handle a lot more weight, whereas the lateral and front raises are isolation exercises where the amount of weight that you'll be using will be uh, relatively pretty light. So again, this exercise looks cool, but it just doesn't make any actual sense when you dive deeper into it. Then we're gonna go with glute bridges. So 10 reps, then we're gonna go to glute kickups to a fire hydrant. 10 reps of each movement on each side. Then he's got some body weight uh, glute exercises thrown in. These are basically Grandma Josephine types of movements if you're not adding any extra resistance for them. Um, you know, an unweighted glute bridge, uh, that isn't really gonna do much for most people given that he's only recommending doing 10 reps. And then he throws in some push-ups and planks. Those are fine for a body weight workout, so uh, no real issue there. So I understand that this is not meant to be some sort of full-blown hypertrophy workout. Okay, I get that. But regardless, the exercise selection here still makes no sense at all, and there's zero reason to combine exercise in this way, especially something like uh, a squat and a triceps kickback. Okay, that's just basic fitness 101 that any fitness trainer should understand. If you are gonna combine exercises, then at least combine movements that you have similar strength levels on, uh, like maybe some type of squatting motion with a hip hinge motion, maybe like a Romanian deadlift, or a push-up with a dumbbell row, or maybe a biceps curl with some type of triceps biceps uh, extension, something along those lines. And even then, I still don't see any good reason to combine exercises in this way, unless of course you are a fitness YouTuber or an Instagram influencer who's trying to impress their beginner audience with innovative exercises that aren't actually better than doing something more basic. Um, it just makes much more sense to select a given exercise for a certain muscle group, perform it in a way that challenges that specific muscle using appropriate resistance, then move on to the next exercise for the next muscle, train that muscle properly based on the resistance it can handle and so on and so forth. Uh, but if you're using a weight that you can do curls with and you're doing 10 reps of that while also using it for lunges and then doing 10 reps of that, then basically you're just getting in a biceps workout since your quads and glutes are not gonna be challenged by that weight. And then the best part here is that he actually says that advanced lifters can use this workout effectively. Now for the advanced lifters out there that don't think that you can benefit from workouts like this as well, just grab some heavier weights and get to work. I guarantee if I was standing next to you right now, I'd figure out a way to push you and make you sweat bullets by the end of this. Okay, I promise you there's no truly advanced lifter on the planet who would benefit from a workout structured in this way. Um, again, for total novices or for people who just want to get more active in general, then fine. Uh, this workout isn't going to hurt you, but there are just much better ways to go about it and to get better results for your time and for your effort. And if you do want to grab a free, properly structured training program that you can perform at a regular gym or from home with minimal equipment in order to gain muscle effectively, and then just combine that plan with some basic cardio to take care of the conditioning and the fat loss, aspect, then make sure to head over to seannell.com slash custom. Just fill out the form on that page and I'll send you back a step-by-step -step workout and nutrition plan that you can follow based on your individual goals. So thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all of my latest videos and leave a comment down below to let me know what you want to see me cover next. Uh, you can follow me over on Instagram at Sean Nalawani and you can also check out my no BS evidence-based sports nutrition line over at realscienceathletics.com to fully optimize your muscle building and fat burning results and you can save 15% off your first order with coupon code YouTube15. Thanks again for watching and I will see you in the next video.